So where does it start? It's starting in the mouth. It's going through the cervical, thoracic, and uh, and um, what just happened? Okay, hold on. So it starts with the cervical, thoracic, and it's going down to, uh, let me do my game till his screen's out. So this is gonna be really fun because uh, I need to pull out my, um, pull out my, that is gonna be really fun because I didn't pull out the, I don't need a whiteboard. Let me go in here. I should try this before I actually go on with you. All right. You see it? Yes. Yeah. You yeah. see the esophagus? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let me minimize you guys. Okay. So uh, alimentary canal starts here in the mouth and it goes down. So you can see you have the, the cervical esophagus, the thoracic esophagus, and here under, here would be the diaphragm, right? So under the diaphragm, you have the abdominal. This is like a small portion of that, the distal esophagus, which is the uh, abdominal esophagus. So uh, you have to know that that when you go to thoracic esophagus, I don't know if you remember that, it's close in the mediastinum. So the, the large uh, uh, vessels and esophagus and a trach and aorta all goes through the, um, in the thoracic cavity, goes through the mediastinum, right? And what do you have then? Do you have the lungs around, right? And the heart. So the big vessels are in a closed cavity so therefore, when you go to thoracic repair, uh, you have to open that mediastinum to get to the esophagus, okay? So you have to gain the access, very important. For the thoracic esophagus, you have to gain the access um, to the mediastinal cavity. So again, uh, esophagus uh, has, is part of the alimentary canal and has a three portion, cervical, thoracic, and the abdominal esophagus. Those are the main thing you have to remember. Um, blood supply. There is nothing I can uh, help you with. So here is that uh, cavity. Here is that uh, mediastinal cavity in, uh, in the tor thorax. So you're surrounded by the, the lungs, right? So if you need access here in that area, you would have to open up that uh, mediastinum. So you see that abdominal esophagus right here. Uh, Let's go to the uh, muscle now, okay? So um, you see these weakened spots here, right? Can you see that, guys? So where the muscle is not connected, that's gonna be uh, a weakened spot, and that's why you can get those uh, hernias there, okay? So that can go the eye pouching, out pouching, and the diverticula in that area. See the attachment of the um, esophagus right in the back and you see the vessels and the nerves coming in that area. Muscle is what? Longitudinal and then we have circular muscle. So you have to know the um, musculature and also um, is there a serosa and is there a mucosa? Mucosa. Yes, right? And what's the movement when when you're swallowing the food? How is the movement that it's a uh, through the peristalsis, right? Yeah. So again, outer layer would be longitudinal muscle, inner would be the circular muscle. That would be, and there is that zone of spare which I just mentioned. That's that weakest area, right? Zone of spare. 
So, uh, and then where is that located? Huh? Lower, what part of the esophagus is that? The lower pharynx. Yeah, lower pharynx, thank you. So that's where would you get that uh, diverticular or that outpouching, okay? And that's what some people have like a really bad breath. So that's where the pouches, the food gets stuck there and and then and it smells very badly. So that's the uh, diverticular. Um, and let's go here. Movement is through the movement of the food would be through the peristalsis, right? So everybody knows that. Let me just scroll through my uh, now. Okay, innervation. Please remember the blood supply, okay? It's very simple for the, the venous return because everything goes to the portal vein, okay? So please, that's important, portal vein. And if there is an issue, somebody has a cirrhosis of the liver, um, we know that it's going to be backflow of the, the blood. It's going to be pooling there. And then they can have the varicose vein. So that would be the issue with the um, venous return. Um, so again, plexus to the portal vein and it's going to the uh, liver. Uh, remember the cervical esophagus arterial supply would be inferior uh, uh, thyroid artery for the thoracic. We have a couple branches and that's from the aorta and it's going to be there as well. Bronchial arteries and uh, right intercostal. And in the abdominal, we have a gastric and the inferior phrenic artery. Nerve supply. Nerve supply is through, again, sympathetic and uh, parasympathetic system. And uh, we have to know that there is a, a right and left a vagus nerve. Let me go on that picture. Um, where this be? This is the drainage. Okay, right and left vagus nerve. Let's go to the next one. What do we see here? Esophageal junction, right? And that's the Z line. Remember that Z line here? And it's a change of the uh, mucosa here. You can see it, it's lighter here and it's very dark on uh, in the stomach. So that's the line which supposed to be where? Where is that sitting, guys? Here is your diaphragm. So it's sitting below the diaphragm and that's the cardia uh, sphincter in that area. Okay. So let's go quickly through this. So what is the problem with the esophagus? Anything what is affecting the esophagus is going to um, change the, the lumen of the esophagus, right? So pass the food from the mouth down to the, the stomach is through peristalsis, but the lumen can be affected by what? Strictures, right? So stricture is the narrowing of the lumen and it can be due to somebody swallow something, especially children or older people can swallow even the dentures. So it would be through the foreigner body. Uh, somebody can swallow the caustic substances, okay? And that's gonna burn the esophagus. So when you burn something, what do you get there? You get the swelling. What's gonna happen with the esophagus? It's gonna narrow. Then, um, you get a scar tissue, a burn esophagus, it's gonna open up the, the mucosa, and then you can get an infection. So, and then is a fistula. If there is an infection, it may be a little track from one side to another, connecting the other side, and you might have a fistula there where the bacteria is gonna be in the space. And then you have the ulcers, okay? And the ulcers are due to what? due to gas, gastric juices, right? Regurgitation, heartburn, okay? Um, so uh, what are the viruses? I just mentioned that before. So that's another condition because those vessels gonna be a distent and, and uh, that's gonna, uh, um, that's due to the portal pressure. 
in a portal in. So if the liver is not um, working properly, you're gonna get the backflow uh, or pooling in a portal vein. And where is it going? It's going through one direction, right? It's, and therefore, if you have a liver not functioning, pooling of the blood in a portal system, it's gonna backflow to the esophageal veins and uh, you're gonna get the varicose distended Van. So we see the varicose veins of many people in the legs. They can be in the esophagus and they can be in the anus and we call them um, hemorrhoids there. So these are called esophageal varices and it's resulting in an increased portal uh, pressure. So we call it portal hypertension. Important, portal hypertension is due to the increased portal pressure. Um, then we had another condition, which is the um, achalasia. That's the cardiospasm, right? So where is the cardia? It's the upper portion of the, the stomach, right? And that's the hereditary condition. So um, it's, it's, a being, it's a benign type of the stenosis of the esophageal gastric uh, junction. So it's tightened, okay? It doesn't um, open, okay? Tight, so there is a lack of the nerve stimulation and nerve stimulation comes for the, from the, the phrenic, from the vagus nerve, okay? So what do we have to do, okay? So because there is no um, uh, proper uh, passage of the food, the peristalsis, um, uh, where did I finish? Uh, uh, not working properly, so peristalsis are uh, impaired, okay? Uh, you can see the stricture on the, on the x-ray, so, um, so therefore uh, we have to do the procedure, right? So, uh, we're going to get to that uh, later, but that's another condition. And please remember that achalasia is a cardiospasm, okay? And it's a benign type of the stenosis of the gastric junction, all right? It's stenosis of the gastric junction, not enough peristalsis. Um, diverticula, everybody knows, is that outpouching, right? Um, and um, atresia is the congenital anomaly. So let me just scroll quickly through it. I, sorry, I didn't move the, the pictures. So this is a uh, stricture. This is the uh, stenosis. And uh, here is the another stricture. Continue. Here is the, the varices. Okay, here are the distended vessels. Over here is the achalasia, okay? So this is the stenosis, okay? And this is that esophageal junction. So what do you have to do? You have to keep it open, okay? And you can see that X-ray shows the markedly distended esophagus because it's distended up here. This is the stricture. So where is the pressure? Pressure is going to push on these sides here. You're building up the the food, everything is stuck up here, so it's gonna distend that esophagus. So here is the x-ray picture, and then you can see that there is a, a stricture right here. Okay, so atresia, I mentioned is the uh, condition diverticula is that outpouching, and as you see it, this is that uh, um, zone, uh, this is that area, okay, where you have the outpouching, and again, it's the it's actually the hernia of the esophagus because we know the hernia is the, the pouch. Um, okay, benign tumors. And um, I mentioned that benign tumors are rare and we uh, see uh, most on the esophagus are the um, malignant tumors, okay? Okay, so that's completed that. We have malignant tumors one, two, and uh, and a three. So now one, number one would be the cervical, number two is, would be the 
thoracic and the number three would be in the uh, lower portion abdominal esophagus all right so what can affect the esophagus would be the strictures varices echolasia diverticula cancer and atresia okay when we are looking um and we want to diagnose these conditions we're going to use the uh esophagus scope okay so this is the egd um i told you to look at the ports you don't have to memorize exactly where the ports are located but you have to know these four ports which are on the uh, esophagus scope this is the flexible one and let's see what do we have the next are the this is this is the atresia here are the combination and as you see over here it goes to the um what what is this esophagus is next to the trachea right so therefore many of these instruments we're going to be using are for both for the trach and for the esophagus so you can see here guys um you have the uh, atresia. So there is no continuity with the esophagus. It's going to the trach. So that has to be surgically repaired right away. All right, so um, instrumentation, very important. And I mentioned that for, anybody has any question? You can stop me if you have a question, okay? Jump right in. I should have a really quick one. What? The four ports for the flexible endoscope, it's, and, yeah. and then there's the instrument port where you put the instruments through, mm -hmm. and then there's suction, and then yeah. the last one is irrigation aspiration, right? Yes. Okay, just yeah. making it. Yeah, okay, you got all the four ports, okay? So if you have to identify the right end, you have to know all these four. And, and you have the camera scope and the light has to go all together because uh, there is no way to see inside, okay? So if you don't have that, you lost, okay? You are fishing out. So those four ports you have to know. Any other question, guys, before I go to instruments? These were the conditions where somebody can have in the esophagus and they're going to be creating all of these conditions going to create the, the strictures. So now I'm going to go to instrumentation and then how we can repair it you may see some of the slides i added up after um because they were not on it so i found them and i put them in uh don't stress um it's some of them are not that important or you don't have to stress uh i'll tell you which ones are um, mostly important you can print them out after okay so over here these instruments, you have some of them on the campus, and I said to you which ones, okay? So you have the meat forceps, you have the, the globula, and a tuck and a pin, right? If you see forceps like this, these are always these round ones. Those are always the, the biopsy forceps, okay? And these tip can be turned left and right or straight, so it depends. It, it allows them to reach better, all right? So if I have a foreigner here at the tips, you can see, um, I know it has a, a it has a handle and many times we call them the forceps. So some students gonna ask, well, is it a climb or is it a forcep, okay? So we go by the, the tip, it's a grabbing, it's gonna be the, the forcep, right? So let's go to the foreigner body tube. So this tube is used to uh, remove you might not have it i added up after so uh, this is the foreign body so if somebody swallows something it's sitting in the esophagus they're gonna just try to use these two because they don't want to irritate the wall of the esophagus because if they would irritate it it's gonna swell and it's gonna create a stricture so they put it in this kind of tube and over here at the tip there is a scope and there is an instrument coming through it so they can find it and they can uh, grab it, push out that instrument and pull it out. So this is for uh, foreign body removal uh, tube, okay? They also have a magnet. They can run the magnet out and pull it, try to pull it. So they're gonna find the stricture or find the foreign body there and they're gonna try to bring it up with the 
the magnet. They can do it with the sporoscope and that would be the easiest way because uh, they don't damage the esophagus. Evil tube, um, I think you have it in the lab, right? Did I skip anything? No, I didn't skip. So then we have the evil tube that would be for the, the caustic, right? If somebody swallows something for the caustic substances, we're going to do the um, uh, lavage. So we're not going to give them emedex, okay? We're going to give them just the lavage. We're going to wash out the, the stomach. So remember, evil tube would be used for swallowing a uh, caustic. That's all what you have to uh, remember, okay? All right, so let's move on. So that was for the treatment for the body. That was treatment of the caustic. Let's go to the next slide. We have the uh, dilators and uh, bougies. Bougies are dilators, okay? Um, they are rubberish um, over here on this side, okay? These two at the, at the bottom. So um, let me see if I have that here, no. Okay, so we have the Jackson uh, filiform, okay? And you have it on the campus. The Jackson filiform, you remember it well because it has a square handle. So if you look at it, it's on a campus square handle and it has the woven a tip. So this is the Jackson filiform a bougie, okay? Uh, next one you have to know is a uh, Hearst. Okay, you have it on the campus. It's right here. What color is it on the campus? Anybody? Red. It's orange. Like orange. Group, uh, I think it was yesterday. What is inside of it? There's okay. Oh, the top pin gel. The top pin gel. Yeah. They replace the mercury with the tungsten gel, yeah. right? Because when they are sterilizing it, Many times these, uh, it's it's a rubber, so it can burst. So therefore, uh, you don't want to give it to patient and fill up the patient with the, the mercury, right? Mercury was used because it, it's heavy and it's weight, so it slides better down, okay? So they replace it with the tungsten gel. Um, so that was the hearse. Then we have a Maloney. Maloney? Um, same size like a, like a Hearst and again it's filled with the tungsten gel. What's the difference there? This one has a little roundish tip, okay? So it's pointed and has that round ball. Um, next group of the dilators are a sippy. Let me go again to these a retrograde. I'm going to mention it maybe later. But you see these loops here, okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to connect those with another uh, dilator. So, and a retrograde is that you have to do the procedure. You have to do the two. You go through inside. So first you're going to go with the scope in, and you're going to pass the heavy uh, suture down, okay? Heavy strength, not even the suture, heavy um, uh, strength. And that's going to go down to the stomach. And you have to do the SFA me right? You have to open the stomach, and as you open it uh, with that uh, scope navigating it through it, you're gonna actually bring that strength to stomach, so other person, other surgeon can pull that strength out, and that's where they're gonna hook up these uh, dilators. And retrograde is they're starting at the bottom and going towards the esophagus from the bottom portion. Okay, so they're starting in the stomach, and they're gonna hook it up to that string you pass through and they're going to pull it the other direction. So they're going to be pulling it up. Okay. So that's why it's the, the retrograde. They have different kind of uh, sizes. So based on the stricture and it has to be done a couple of times. So I might mention it, but I just want to point this one out and the color was like a light blue, right? With this uh, uh, tips. So here are the sippy. What is good? These CP dilators are metal and they can be sterilized, right? So you can put them in the autoclave. And again, here is the passer, here is the string, and you can loop them on 
based on the size you need. What's the difference between the city and the plumber? It's just a different shape, okay? So now the Jackson filiform bougie with the red woven tip and a metal square handle, okay? They are in a graduated sizes. All of these are graduated sizes. So when you line them up for a surgeon to use, you have to put them in the right order because they're just gonna grab it by themselves and, uh, and use it. So we have the uh, Hearst, we have Maloney, and we have uh, CP, okay? And again, with the CP, remember, uh, it's a dilating set. It's sitting in that tray and has the a rounded olive-shaped tip and it's in the graduated sizes. Um, so retrograde, I just mentioned. So with the retrograde, you have to, that's this one, okay? With the retrograde, you have to remember um, that you have to do also uh, gastronomy. And if I'm doing gastronomy, am I just looking for the stomach, like through the skin? No, I have to do the laparotomy. So I have to open the abdomen and I have to find the stomach and I have to uh, find that string and a bit the light through the uh, esophagus scope and a gastroscope that light's going to actually um, the surgeon when he's putting the scope inside through the esophagus to stomach is going to make that light in the side where the string's going to be so the other surgeon can cut right in the stomach in that area and pull that out and run that uh, um, run the dilator through. So this is the Taka retrograde, okay? So again, Taka retrograde goes in through the stomach and out through the um, mouth. Uh, Sippy dilators, I just say they can be steam sterilized, okay? So remember that, okay? This is the big advantage because it's a, it's a metal, okay? So they can be steam um, no. Okay. So uh, these days, uh, if we don't have to use this, we don't use that because we don't, we want to do the procedure, which is minimally invasive. So we're using, um, these balloon catheters. Okay. So that the place in here is the scope again, right? Here is the open port for the, the balloon. So you're going to put it, find the stricture, put it in the area, and the balloon's going to be inflated, and it's going to be leaving there for, for a little while. So it's going to press on the stricture, and it's going to be opening up the stricture. Okay, so uh, is it a permanent? Um, can be and doesn't have to be because the stricture can appear again, and then it has to be repeated. So that was the balloon catheter. So here are the Jackson filiform in the order, right? Uh, on the next one, you have that Hearst, so you remember that. And let's go for the treatment of the varices. So this was the stricture. So I went through the coronary body. I mentioned the um, caustic uh, substance, and now um, this is for the treatment of the varices. Okay, so the varices are at the lower portion of the esophagus. You can see them here in the stomach and the esophagus. So What's the main thing here? They have to, again, put that. It's going through the nose, okay, through the esophagus. Um, they're going to harbor the balloon. This balloon's going to be pressing, but it's going to keep that uh, tube inside. It's going to be keeping it in a steady position, right? We have a couple of the, the ports here. So one goes through the uh, gastric balloon, one port goes through the suction because you're going to have a bleeding there. You have to suck the juices which build up in the stomach and you have to uh, suck the blood, right? So therefore, there. this is the suction in the stomach at the bottom where I'm pointing out. And then you have the esophageal balloon connected. So we have a clamp for the operation which we can uh, clamp it. And then uh, over here is the that this is the balloon where you're going to actually increase the pressure so again you're gonna literally uh, burst those uh, the varices okay because they're distended so you know you're gonna have the bleeding as soon as you touch them that balloon is inflated they're gonna 
uh, a rapture, I believe, and uh, this way you get rid of them, but uh, you have to take care of that blood to suck that out, all right? So that's the, that was um, this one. Uh, what do we have here? Hemat, um, over here, very important that yellow is, uh, you can treat the varices with the, the injections, okay? So you use the flexible gastroscope and you're gonna be injecting them. You're gonna sclerotize them, okay? And this is the uh, very bad picture, but uh, you can uh, just remember that the Williams tube can be advanced and uh, um, we can inject the, the, the viruses there. Um, let me find myself where I was in the notes. Okay, so the next one. Okay, so this is that NG tube I just gave you to, so you can see it more as a detail. It's the same as this one, okay? So you can see that Sunkston uh, in a more detail here, what has to be clamped. You can see that I have three clamps here, the pressure balloon and everything. So it's just for you to see it better so now we're going to go to the uh surgical procedures okay and now we have um what do we have to do uh is there a treatment is there a no treatment okay um so can we um is it a benign disease and is it the malignant disease can i treat it can i take care of it surgically or we're just going to do the palliative uh treatment um, so if, uh, if it's a cancer there, um, we can uh, literally uh, do the uh, port removal of the portion, but then either you reconnect it, if it's possible to reconnect that esophagus, or um, we just have to replace it with another portion if it's a total esophagectum. So let's move on. Another treatment of the cardiospasm, that's a surgical procedure we have two surgical procedures there, okay? So this is the achalasia. Uh, that would be a dilation of the cardiospasm. So remember, this is the stricture, distended esophagus, okay? Yeah. So uh, we can do the, um, for the minor surgical approach, I would use that musher. Here is the musher dilator, okay? And remember, that's the minor approach okay and we can use the plumber dilators so this would be remember for the minor would be motion dilators okay uh, and for the major we would use the uh, this approach that's the hella procedure okay so minor is the we, we can use the motion dilator what is a motion dilator Again, it's a tube, okay? We're gonna be inflating it with the, the air. There is a certain pressure, 10 to 15, you have it on, you don't have to memorize that. Or we can fill it with the, the water. So air or a water can be used for this uh, distension, okay? Inflating that balloon. Here is another procedure, Hella, okay? Uh, that would be the surgical treatment, and we call it the major. So esophageal myotomy has to be done with this procedure, okay? Um, and then what, do, what are we cutting here? Esophageal myotomy. We're going to cut the muscle, right? So, um, so we have to, we have two types of the muscle there. Did I say we have the longitudinal, right? And we have the, the circular, right? So what are we uh, positioning would be? What's the positioning, guys? Spine. Oh. Okay. And we have a, we have a transthoracic, transthoracic or transabdominal approach, right? So if I'm doing transabdominal and I'm going to a self because the instrumentation has to be bigger, right? And if you're using a thoracic, you need to use the chest instrumentation also. All right. 
So what are we, uh, what we can use guys? Uh, we can use the esophageal bougies and why we are using the bougies or we can use the uh, NG tube there. Why, why are we putting it in? To dilate. To either to dilate, dilate, but also we don't want to cut all the way through, right? We don't want to cut the, the submucosa and uh, mucosa, right? We don't want to go all the way through. The main reason is to cut that circular muscle so it doesn't spasm in that area. So you're going to divide the longitudinal and cut the uh, a circular muscle, right? So um, again, you can use the esophageal bougies for this procedure. Uh, you can use the, um, you can use the, the plumber, um, uh, Hurst Maloney, okay, dilators. And they're going to be working as a splint. They're going to be inside sitting there. So you are not cutting through. Okay. So we're going to be splitting the longitudinal, cut the circular muscle, but we're going to leave intact the uh, mucosa and the submucosa. Okay. So we're going to take care of that constriction. If I have uh, entering the chest cavity and I'm doing the thoracic approach, with the thoracic approach, you have to use the, the pleurac because you have to, again, um, many times they have to deflate the, the lung to, to get to that area because it's, it's very tight in that space. So we have to reestablish that negative pressure. And that's going to be with the chest, chest tube and then to that pleurac. That's that uh, seal drainage. I'm going to show it to you at the end, okay? Actually, I can show it to you now if I go all the way down. So this is that seal drainage, okay? So the air, that's going to be a small suction. Uh, um, many times uh, people who are not qualified are hooking up this and somebody hook it up to the Neptune device, which is a very strong suction and they suck out the, the lungs of the patient. All right, so uh, this is a very low and it's going to wall suction only and it's a small suction. So you're going to see the bubbles in these areas coming out and, and it prevents to um, the air going back in. So here you can see it again. Okay, so this is going from the patient. So the lungs can go and open up again and it, it's a uh, to and this is the hookup to the the chest tube okay so patient has to have a chest tube and this is the pleurawak this is the seal water seal drainage okay and let me go back so again when you touch and you go to a thoracic cavity patient might need the chest tube and might need this uh device so we're finished here right um diverticula Okay, so let's go to the uh, this procedure. So what are the symptoms if somebody has the uh, diverticula? So it's a pouch right here, right at the um, upper portion of the esophagus. I say you can actually smell those people who have the, they have a, like a bad breath, heavy, bad uh, decomposed food to smell. So, um, so this is in the, that, um, a zone where where it's a weaken um, the muscle, so they're gonna have that out pouching, okay. And um, what you have to know is the symptoms of this is the dysphagia, okay, or full neck, okay. And um, we don't, we don't know the cause of this, um, and it's a spastic construction of the pharyngeal muscle so that can be a spastic con uh, contraction of the pharyngeal muscle and this is which portion of the esophagus we're talking about the, the cervical because let me go back here when you see that on the picture okay this here okay this is where the, the weakness is okay and you see that the muscle is actually changing in, in this area. Um, so, so you gotta have, you have that weakness there. 
Okay, so that's the Zankarva diverticula uh, where I was. Okay, so, so similar dissection, okay, basic dissecting instruments, and I mentioned this is the similar to hernia orophy, all right, and what would be the uh, incision, usually vertical incision, right, uh, and it's um, left or anterior midline in the neck, okay, so over here is the left okay or anterior midline on the neck so those are the incisions on that that's what you have to know and now is the treatment of the malignant uh, tumor okay and we have a couple of the tubes so a patient has to have a permanent gastronomy why they have a tumor of the esophagus so we have to feed them so permanent gastronomy is just to put the feeding tube in and we can use this uh we can use the laser vaporization procedure which can uh, vaporize the, the tumor that, that's a one uh treatment and that's going to be uh, opening up that stricture so laser vaporization we can use the macula uh, we have the macula and a celestine tube in the lab and I pointed out for students, right? Did you see it? Some of them saw it uh, uh, yesterday, okay? So remember, this is the palliative surgery, okay? Won't cure, but will um, alleviate the symptoms. So that's all what you have to know about uh, um, uh, this surgical procedure. Remember, gastronomy has to be created for the feeding tube okay these tubes are put in and they are attached with the sutures okay when you put it in you have to use the scope you have to pass the stricture and you have to guide that uh, tube inside and that tube's going to be attached uh, and when they're putting it in uh, the best thing is to put it over as the uh, Levine tube Okay, everybody saw the Levine. You had the Levine uh, last year in uh, with uh, Professor Taylor. Right? So, the basic NG tube, that's the Levine tube, okay? Um, and again, macula tube is the shorter one. Celestine is the, the like a dark brown long one, which you had in the lab. You had the celest macula tube, which is the small one, like a nude color, I would say like a yellowish brown light brown okay okay and the heavy silk suture was going to attach that oh. tube uh in a in a proper oh. yeah okay and that's going to alleviate the symptoms and uh they're not going to have so much uh, uh, pain okay so it's palliative okay uh so we're going to go to part three the last lecture I mentioned that laser vaporization for you to remember whenever you're going to work with the laser, you have to have a wet uh, sponge on the field in the case of the cancer. Um, you have to have a goggles on you, protective, not your goggles, but these are special laser goggles that everybody should have it in the room. You're going to have people, okay, we're on short of the goggles. So circulator scrub surgeon is going to get it. The anesthesia said, okay, I'll turn around. I'll, I'm not going to have it, right? Uh, everybody should have it in the room. You have a different type of the, the laser, uh, YAG, um, argon, um, so uh, CO2 lasers, and you have to have a, a laser nurse. The nurse is specifically operating this machine. So that's going to be circulating nurse, laser nurse attack with the wet sponge and the goggles and also you need to have on the door um, extra pair of the goggles in the case somebody needs to come in the room and you have to have a sign on the door laser in the use and it's a big sign danger laser in the use all right so that's for all your protection and the shooting and so um, some of them are doing the shot so you have to put the count off or you have to put the time for how long was that laser used 
All right, so let's go to the uh, next part. Here is the nutty tube, guys, which I um, <coughs> describe, and this is the Atkinson and using the Harrington rod for the placement, okay? This is a kit, okay? This come in a one kit, everything has to be in it, and it's put properly. Uh, you can reposition it, you can check that, okay? So um, you have to uh, just just know this. I, I describe it pretty well in the, in, the, in the lecture. You're gonna pass it all the way in. You're gonna remove the, the Levine uh, tube on. You have a scope there. You, you're gonna put this tube over and you have the uh, prosthesis here, okay? So this is the tube and as we call it the, the, anything goes in the body is a prosthesis is the implant, okay? And they just gonna go again with the scope in and check the, the positioning, okay? So this is another a way to, for the polyadive treatment. As you see here on this slide, I mentioned macula celestine and the Atkinson tube and Atkinson is using that, uh, nothing in prosthesis placement of the Atkinson. Um, okay, so let's go for the uh, resection. I add this um, here, these pictures, okay? Uh, please don't stress over it. It's, it's a little um, overcomplicated. Um, SDSG, okay? What is SDSG is a split thickness skin graft, okay? So they take the skin anywhere from the body, they need a dermatome to shave that skin. So do not, they not take the whole layer of the skin, only a portion, okay? So it's thinner and they're gonna create the tube from uh, this. So we have three procedures, okay? And a resection, where are we? This is the cervical esophagus. So. This is only for uh, when we are resecting the cervical esophagus and just remember these three methods. You don't have to memorize anything else. Edgerton is, Edgerton is a free skin graft. So split thickness skin graft, Wookie would be lateral skin flap and a Kante would be pedicle skin graft. So let me go to this one. So you can see that this is that mesh I was telling you, okay? The skin graft's gonna go over this metal mesh because if you take a split thickness, it's not strong enough, okay? And they're gonna place it over, over this uh, um, mesh, okay? And uh, they're gonna sew it inside. They're gonna create a tube from this and replace that cervical esophagus. This is the free uh, skin graft. Free means it's loose. It's not attached to anything. So they can take it anywhere from the body. Just remember the raw side. Where is the raw side going? They're flipping it over. They go to raw skin and a, and a skin's going to stay all the way uh, on the other perimeter. Okay, so this is the split thickness. Let me move on. So uh, the next one on a, this was the Wookie, that's a lateral. So they cut a portion of the skin of the neck, but they leave it. So they just gonna cut these three sides and they're gonna use it to roll it inside. And again, raw side's gonna go to raw side. And uh, as they flip it here, they create a tube inside. So raw to raw and, and a skin to skin. So, so when you put the row to row, you have on a both sides the skin and they can create the, the tube. Um, advantage of this is that uh, a, there is a blood supply here, okay? So they're using this blood supply from the side of the neck. It's a two-part procedure. First, they're gonna create the tube. They're gonna uh, connect it six weeks later and they're gonna close the, the wound. Main thing, just remember the name of the procedure and this is the lateral skin graft. So this is not a free skin graft, it's the, the lateral, all right? And uh, the last one was the, where I was, the, the conte. Okay, this is the pedicle. So where are we taking the pedicle? They're taking it from the 
the neck. You see that pedicle here? Okay, that's a portion. They're gonna flip it and the same way, roll to roll, skin skin to stay and create the, the tube outside. So this is the uh, pedicle graft. All right, is that clear to everybody? Nobody's talking. Are you there, guys? Still? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, don't, I just don't want to talk to myself here, and everybody's just going to sign off. All right. So, what's the name of this mesh here, guys? Anybody can tell me. Edgerton. Edgerton? No. The proline mesh? No. Tantalum, it calls the tantalum gauze, okay? And they can remove that tantalum. It's a metal, it's like a titanium almost. Um, okay, so that's a tantalum gauze and they can remove it after or they can leave it in, okay? So this, I have a question. Yeah. Can we um, can we use something like this on um, like a not a child but let's say like a pre adolescent this um you know this procedure can this be done on them? It's really hard because uh, uh, children are growing, you know. So you have to use something which is like more flexible. Okay. So on the kids, we don't want to close everything like that. But uh, hopefully, they don't have a. Um, they would use a different method. Yeah, I would not use this, okay? Okay, thank you. So, as you see, the tantalum goes inside and they suture the this raw side over to raw side again and the skin stays outside here and then they create a tube from it, okay? They close this, close it up and they create the literally tube. And then they have to connect this upper portion would be uh, where? to the esophagus all the way at the top. And then this would be going to the middle portion of the esophagus. So this is just for removal. Remember these three methods is removal of the, the cervical esophagus. You have a, a free a graft of skin thickness, skin graft, and you have the pedicle, and then you have a free flap, right? So those are the three methods and now we're gonna go to another portion please remember uh instrumentation used for these procedures are this can be the retractor thompson retractor use has a lot of attachment you can modify it modify the size um, these pieces are in a different sizes so you can use it on a child you can use it on an adult and here are the stapling devices uh, you're going to have a lecture on a stapling devices. Uh, I think um, Miss Allen and uh, Miss Angel is going to, they usually had a guy coming from the Eticon and give a lecture on this. I think the PowerPoints are on, but they're going to give you a lecture on this. So they're going to record something and have it posted. These are different type of stapling this. Um, GIA is the one of the best ones because it, it cuts and staples on each side and we want to use it especially when we're working with the intestines because um, it's cut and staples and it's it's a, it's a best device for that and these are well, well we'll talk about it later as we go and we have them in the lab so you can start looking at them for the intestines and, and a stomach, okay? So here is the uh, esophageal gastrectomy. So what I'm mo moving, okay? I'm removing the esophagus, but I'm treating the, um, I'm moving the uh, portion of the stomach. Am I creating the hernia here? Pretty much, right? Uh, okay, we need a rubber uh, dam. Uh, we need to like, um, sometimes we have to use the uh, rubber glove or a rubber dam 
just uh, to close that lumen, okay, on, on the side, just not to have the, the spillage. So that's that's only use of that. And um, we can close, you see this? I'm closing the side of the stomach because I need to connect this. How I'm gonna connect it? Shove the tube there. If I need to connect it, I have to open the stomach. Take care of this uh, closure first, and then I'm gonna close that opening which I used. So I need to go literally in, reconnect this portion after I remove the a portion of the esophagus, and then I'm gonna close this, okay? So this is a TA device, okay? TA device, uh, you have them on the campus, and they have a cartridges here. The cartridge with the staples is reloadable and every uh, one of them is in, in a different color by the size and by the how many times you can load it. Some of them you can load seven times, only eight times. So this is disposable whole device. And when you load those staples, you can load it on a certain period of time. And when you're reloading it, this has to go in the water. You have to rinse it because sometimes those little staples can get stuck somewhere. And then if you put it back in the body, they can get loose here. So you need to have a good basin with the, uh, with the water and, and rinse always these instruments before you put the uh, next load in, okay? And here you see it uh, closed, okay? So first I take care of this portion. I reconnect this. And then I'm going to close that stomach, okay? So this is called TA. So we're using, if I use TA90, then I don't need a TA50, right? And uh, stapling instruments are GIA, TA90, 55, and a 30. That's a bit different size, okay? Different blend. Uh, we'll go over that. I'll uh, make sure uh, I'll tell Miss Martin when you go in the lab, you'll look at those. So let's go to the uh, next slide. So let me go. This was the, the resection, esophagectomy. Uh, let's go to the next one. And this is the esophagectomy. So we are removing the completely the esophagus and we are using the colon transposition. Okay, what size of the colon we can use? What do you see on the picture? What size of the column they used? They used the, the right side, right? So they reposition it. So they need to free up some blood supply here, as you see it, because they have to flip it up. But they're going to leave, see this portion of the column? That blood supply is going to uh, stay on, okay? So again, we, we move the stomach, right, uh, on a one portion. On this portion, we use the uh, large intestine for the, the procedure. So it would be a transpositioning. And, and when I'm transpositioning it, this part's going to stay. But if I'm positioning it up, I'm calling it transposition. And what anastomosis I'm doing? Am I doing a side to side or end to end? End to end. End to end, yes. Okay. And what part is still here? Um, we see that little part here. What is this? Um, it's okay. What? This is appendix down here, but this side over here. Uh, so I'm gonna be putting not the large colon. I'm gonna attach that small intestine portion to the. Esophagus. So I'm doing end to end anastomosis of the ileum to remaining portion of the um, whatever uh, was there at the esophagus, right? Guys? Yes. Is that uh, too complicated? No. We can use the other portion. So either we use the right side of the colon or uh, we're going to be uh, using our left side, okay? So we have to, um, only what we have to do is cut of these, okay? So we have to, what would you use? Ties, right? So we have to use the staples or we're going to use the uh, ties to get these vessels 
these arteries out because we cannot transposition position it when it's connected to the blood supply here. Okay. So that's the other one. And I don't know why this is move. I have to fix this, okay? Um, so esophageal gastrotomy. So let's go to the esophageal, esophageal gastrotomy, okay? Here is the reverse gastric. Where is the esophageal gastrotomy? I guess I don't have a picture on the esophageal gastrotomy. Um, please remember for the esophageal gastro gastrotomy, uh, there is a, a pr procedure is involving the resection of the cardia and a distal fifth of the esophagus, okay? So it can be for cancer or for benign tumor, but you have to uh, resect, and this procedure is for the mid, upper, a thoracic portion, okay? So remember uh, at this uh, esophageal gastrotomy, we have to resect the cardia and the distal fifth of the esophagus. I have to fix this, okay? That's all what you have to remember for this uh, part. Um, next procedure would be gastric, yeah? That, what you just said, the reduce the cardiac area and the distal fifth of the esophagus, is that the same photo that we were looking at first with the total cervical? No. Like when they were, when you said we were creating a hernia or no, that's different. This is a, because that was like. Yeah, I, I guess. Yes, 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 yes. Where okay, because right. it was labeled the, eso yes. the esophagus. Okay, okay, but this was, uh, um, this was for the, the, um, the cervical, okay? So, um, yeah, I think this is the correct picture. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, this is not a cervical. This is the one which has to go for the, the other picture, okay? I'll fix that, okay? Yes, so let's go to the, this picture actually has to go here, okay? Esophageal gastrotomy, all right? So we are dissect, dissecting the cardia and the last fifth of the um, esophagus. So let's go to the uh, next one is the reverse gastric tube. So we're creating uh, the gastric tube here, okay, from this portion. So we're making the stomach smaller. We are repositioning the connection here and we are using these tubes. So this tube is going to move on and replace uh, the portion of the esophagus. So this is only thing you have to know for that. And then we're going to another resection. And this is the atresia here. I jumped too much here. So, and then we have resection of the lower esophagus by using the, the jejunum. Okay, jejunum is which portion of the uh, small intestine? The middle. Okay. So the middle portion. So um, I'm creating anastomosis, okay? And I have to free up. Everything is hooked up to the uh, certain, uh, like a mesocolon and all that stuff. So um, everything gets connected. So you have to free up that portion and you'll have to relocate uh, the jejunum, okay? So um, we have to have a good flow also of the uh, juice. Everything gets to the portion of the uh, duodenum. So therefore, um, it has to be a couple connection here done. So as you see here, here is at the top connection with the esophagus. And here is the connection of the jejunum to a jejunum, okay? So this is gonna be esophageal um, jejunostomy. So what I'm connecting? I'm connecting the jejunum to esophagus here, right at the top. And then I have to create side to side 
because I'm not doing end-to-end uh, -end anastomosis, right? This was the end-to-side, and here is the side-to-side. -side. So I'm connecting jejunum to jejunum, so I'm creating side-to-side jejuno jejunostomy. Everybody understand that? Guys? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is the one method, and then the next method of the uh, treatment of the, or surgical repair of the uh, lower esophagus would be RUVIM. Okay, so this is going to be the end to side jejunostomy and end to end esophagal jejunostomy. So you see this jejunum to esophagus, right? So this is the one end to the other end. Okay, so that's why it's called end to end esophagal jejunostomy, and this is going to be the end to side jejuno jejunostomy. Okay, so here end to side jejuno jejunostomy, and again uh, we're going to be closing that duodenum. So here going to be you're just going to close that duodenum because it had to to move. Okay. Right. All right, so uh, that one that's going to be a resection with the uh, jejunum. So, um, okay, so this is probably everything you have to know for the exam. Okay, and then it was that last picture I jump over here, actually before. So, so this is the atresia treatment, and I mentioned that before. What they have to do is disconnect it from the esophagus here, right, and have the. Uh, this is the trach actually disconnect it from the trach and connected esophagus to the esophagus here. Okay. So okay. that's all. And 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 um and the fistula, okay. So this is the like a fistula here. Uh you have a TE fistula, okay? That's the the most common complication of the esophageal atresia. So remember that TE uh tracheal esophageal fistula is the most common uh a fistula, a most common complication of the um, esophageal atresia, okay? You have a little tunnel where you don't want it, okay? And now that can harbor the bacteria that can have an infection. So that would be the most common uh, complication. All right, is this a little simple? Please uh, uh, make sure you uh, remember all this, okay? Professor, I have a question regarding yeah. um, skin graft. Yeah. You said um, with the skin graft, you're not completely removing the skin, correct? You're just removing um, three portions? Yeah, they... it's a yeah, it's a split thickness, okay? So that's why we call it split thickness, because we take only a couple layers of the skin. So it's oh. not going to be the full thickness. Okay. okay. That's why it's a split thickness, and that was the free free graft, okay? You have to use that uh, tantalum mesh for that. Okay, and then you just, um, then you use that portion that you, you have taken and then you make a tube from that with the raw side to raw side, correct? Yeah, so you put the mesh in the middle and you put the raw side and raw side over it. So now you have a nice skin outside and you create that tube from it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, any question, guys? Professor, I just have a question about this week's schedule. Can you go over it, please? Next week's schedule? Yes. Just before I stop this.